we are at the Makers and Bakers fundraising event and uh, together we're going to be putting on a community emergency response event called Responding Together. I really believe in community self-determination and the more that our communities take control of their own lives, the better off we're going to be. Um, what we're trying to build is um, community resiliency um, uh, towards climate change. We've seen in the past in places like uh, where Hurricane Katrina or Hurricane Sandy has hit that low-income communities are often forgotten. The more prepared communities are to help one another, then they're not going to have to be so worrisome about how they can get help. What if our electricity gets cut? What if there's power outage? So we're thinking about um, low-income people, marginalized community members, um, indigenous people, people of color. Much of this information in regards to climate resiliency is it's just simply not something that's, you know, it's a part of our daily dialogue. Climate change and climate justice is something that impacts all, every single being on this planet, but it, it's also important for us to think about those who are most vulnerable. For me, it, it's my duty as a citizen, as a community member, um, as a mother to be doing these, this sort of thing. I mean, yes, the government should do more, but it's also we need to take care of ourselves as well. Many of our community members are just multi-talented people. I'm a massage therapist, I'm a community gardener, I'm a visual artist, so I'm thinking about um, climate change um, through all of these perspectives. The environment is where you live, work, play, and pray. So even if you never go out you know, to the Boundary Waters, even if you've never been outside of the city limits, you are within your environment. You know, this is, Lake Street is our environment right now. We really want to break down that um, patriarchal, hierarchical system. Um, we think that emergency preparedness can be accessed by everyone and we all have that ability, we all have the knowledge and we want to definitely ensure that um, official responders are, are being respectful of community members. I kind of intensified the work that I did around environmental justice and climate justice after the birth of my daughter because uh, it's even, you know, the future is even more real when you have children. Um, and then I realized what kind of what kind of world am I going to leave her, and is she going to be prepared and ready to face whatever challenges come with it? The community bake sale was to raise money for a community emergency preparedness fair or event. And that actually really highlights the problem of inequality very well, because unlike other emergency preparedness that are at a city or state level that are really geared towards businesses or maintaining an infrastructure, the community part of emergency preparedness hasn't happened as well as we would like. And so what community organizations are doing now is they're actually taking that up for themselves. How can we educate ourselves to become more resilient and to deal with the issues of climate change? This is going to be the civil rights movement of the 21st century because the people that can least afford climate change are going to be the first ones impacted. The 1% can move, build higher walls, they'll, they'll be just fine. It's the people that can't move, that are stuck, and that have to deal with the impacts of this climate volatility. They will be the first ones impacted, the first ones injured, the first ones killed. Hurricane Katrina is one example where we saw disproportionate impacts, for example, in the African-American community and in low-income communities that didn't have the capacity to either be mobile and deal with Hurricane Katrina. We saw the same thing in Hurricane Sandy. Those communities that have acknowledged that we need to work together on this will be in a much better place to cope and withstand um, the, the stresses that are coming our way. And the question then becomes, how are those communities going to be resilient enough to deal with that? And so that creates a whole analysis or an understanding of what are the different infrastructure capacities across our neighborhoods. And of course, if 
there isn't an equal infrastructure capacity for resilience in adapting, then that's only going to lead to higher inequality. What I would offer is that NOAA has always been a big proponent of looking at it from two different angles. One would be mitigation, and that would be certainly controlling our CO2 the emissions and what we're putting into the atmosphere. And the second one being more of an adaptation type of a, a, of a strategy for coping. And that is knowing that what we know about the, the changing climate and that we're on this trajectory where things will in fact change, what is it that we can do working with local communities and businesses to help them uh, prepare for the changes that are coming?